Welcome to the tutorial on creating student portfolio using Google Sites. Today, we are going to explore the world of student portfolios and learn how to create our own using Google Sites. A student portfolio is a comprehensive collection of your academic and extracurricular achievements, showcasing your growth and accomplishments throughout your academic journey. For our sample portfolio, we will be focusing on the work and experiences from an academic year. Let me walk you through the sitemap we will be using. The main section of the portfolio will be Academic. This section will include your performance in various assessments such as unit tests, pre-midterm, midterm exam, post-midterm exam, preparatory examinations and annual examination. Apart from that, activities done in the classroom like group work, pair work and your presentations will also be part of this section Academic. The other section will be non-academic. Here we will highlight your participation and achievements in activities outside the classroom like electoral literacy campaigns, youth parliament, model UN, other inter-school competitions like heritage quiz, etc. For each of these sections, you will be adding relevant documents, photos and videos as evidence of your work. Additionally, you will be reflecting on your experiences and learnings in each area. By end of this process, you will have a well-structured and visually appealing portfolio that captures your growth and accomplishments in given academic year. You can pause the video in between to complete the steps. Have you worked with Microsoft Word, PowerPoint or Google Docs and Google Slides? Do you know to select, copy and paste, insert images? Then you will find working in Google Sites very easy. To create a Google site, open your web browser and search for Google Sites. Click on the first link. Log in with your Gmail credentials. The username and password to log into Google site is the same as the one you use to log into your Gmail. I will skip this step as I have already logged in. Once you have logged in, you are presented with various options. You can start a new site clicking on blank site or use one of the many ready-made templates available. Click on this template gallery button. You will see a number of ready-made templates. There are templates readily available to create personal portfolio. There are some for small businesses, but we are interested in this education section. The last one in this section is student portfolio. Click on this. An editable web template opens up. At the first look, it might look a little intimidating, but don't worry. We will visit most of these features one by one. What you see is an editable home page. You can change the name, add logo and change the background image. Enter your name here where you see your name. Let me enter a dummy name, Ravi. I'll type in R-A-V-I, Ravi. Let's add school logo. I already have stored all the assets needed to build a portfolio. I click on logo and navigate to my desktop and open the folder named portfolio assets and choose this image as logo. Next, click on the pre-filled text and enter your name. I will enter the name of Ravi here. Now let's change the background image. Click on image button in the bottom left corner. Click on select. You are taken to image gallery. Choose one that suits your taste. I'll choose this one. This image of a laptop on the table along with the notebook and pen goes well with our theme, doesn't it? Alternatively, you can upload your own image. Let's upload our school image as the background. The procedure is the same as uploading the logo. Click on image, then click on upload. I'll select this school image as the background. Doesn't it look beautiful? Now let's go to other two options. Reset option reverts all the changes that you have made. I am not going to do it. Click on banner type. Play around the options available. I prefer banner. Click on it. If you scroll down a bit, you will see pre-made section called about me. Just do as directed. Tell your site viewers more about yourself. What class are you in and what school do you go to? What skills, talents and knowledge do you have? What do you like learning about? Now let's learn a bit about text editing. 
As soon as you click on the text box, a number of editing options pop up. You can select a piece of text and change it to title, heading or simply normal text. You also can change the font, font size, text color, almost everything that you can do in Microsoft Word or Google Docs. If you scroll down a bit further, you see a section with three placeholders. Just do as directed. Mention your achievements, strengths and goals briefly. You can edit the footer by entering your email ID. Let me enter a dummy one. I'll type in a b c at gmail.com. That's about the home page. Now let's go to other editing options where you can do a lot of things. First, let's learn about adding pages. Click on page. Already two pages are pre-made. Let's delete them. To do this, click on the three buttons present against the page name and delete the page. Do the same for other page too. Now we are left with only the home page. We need to add pages to our portfolio. We will add three pages. Can you see the plus mark here? When you hover over it, you see four options. To begin with, click on it to add a new page. Let's call the page Academic. Now, you are away from the home page and in the new page you have just created. It is in this page that we add Ravi's academic achievements. Let's create the second one. Again, click on the plus sign to add a new page and name it Co-Curricular. We will add Ravi's achievements in co-curricular activities in this page. We will add the last page and name it Reflection Prompts. You can jump between the pages just clicking on them. Look at the option that you get when you click on the three dots. You can set the page as home page, which is not necessary I guess. You can duplicate the page, you can change the name of the page, you can add a sub page, which we will do very soon. You can hide the page from navigation or delete the page if you are not happy with it. Let's add section to these pages one by one. First, let's add content to the page reflection prompts. Ensure that you are on that page. Click right below the header. Click on insert and insert a text box. I'll type in Reflections. Select the text and change it to Heading. I have created an elaborate reflection prompts for your benefit. Let me copy and paste that content here. That's it. The page is created. You will have to refer to the content of this page which helps you to write reflections. Let's add content to other two pages. Again click on Page. Ensure that you are on the academic page. Just double click on the space right below the header. In the pop-up, you can see you have the option of inserting a text, uploading an image, importing any document from your Google Drive or even embedding a video. Alternatively, look at the host of other options available to you here. There are sections with placeholders for images and texts. Since we are entering academic achievements in this section, let's add a text box. Give it a title. Let's call it Unit Test 1 and Marks Code 13 on 15. Add one more text box and give it a title Reflections. Select it and make it a heading. Go to Page and click on Page Reflection Prompts. Copy the reflection prompts for the unit test and exams. Come back to the academic page and paste it. This set of prompts helps you to reflect on your performance. Let your reflections be honest and genuine. You can also upload PPT that you have presented in the class too. For the purpose of demonstration, I will insert Shreya's presentation. I have it uploaded in the Google Drive. You can embed your Google document by clicking Insert and then clicking Google Drive. 
you can navigate to the document that you are looking for and then click on it. That's it. The document is inserted in the Google site. Add a text box below the document to write your reflections. Type in reflections, change the text to heading and copy paste the reflection prompt as we have done earlier. Remember, reflections are integral part of your portfolio. It is necessary to reflect upon every activity that you have done or participated in. It's time we add a link to the interactive digital timeline we have created using TikTokie. For the purpose of demonstration, I will use the timeline which I have created. In order to add that to your portfolio, you need to create a button. Again click on insert. Scroll down until you see button. Click on it. Name it Timeline Nationalism in India. Let's insert a link to it. I'll go to the timeline which I have created. I'll copy the share link and insert the link to make the button clickable. Insert a text box beneath the button so that you can reflect upon the activity of creating the timeline. You can always refer to the reflection prompts page to get ideas. Since you create a number of custom maps, let's create a dedicated sub page under academic. Click on page and then on the three dots against the page academic and then click on sub page. Name it digital maps. Let's embed maps that you create here. Click on insert and then on embed. In the pop-up window, click on buy URL. For the purpose of demonstration, I will embed two maps which I have created. I will go to Google My Maps. Let me select this map showing dams of India. Copy the share code. Go back to Google Sites and paste the code here. That's it. The map is embedded. Let's add one more. This time I will select international airports. The procedure is the same. Click on embed again and select embed by URL. Go to Google My Map, copy the share button, go back to Google Sites and embed the code. Now it's time to add reflection. Insert a text box, give it the title reflections. You can take help from reflection prompt page to write your reflections. That's it. You have completed your entries in the academic page and sub page as of now. As you participate in more activities, you can keep adding them in the portfolio. All right, let's move on to the co-curricular page of your portfolio. This is where you will showcase your achievements and participation in activities outside the classroom. First, let's add a section to your involvement in youth parliament program. Click insert and insert a text box. Give it a title, youth parliament. In this section, you can upload any certificates, photos or other evidence of your participation and accomplishments in your youth parliament program. To add an image, click on insert option and select image. You can either upload an image from your computer or choose one from Google Drive. I will upload this image for the purpose of demonstration from my computer. Below the image, you can add a brief description of your role, responsibilities and key takeaways from the youth parliament experience. Remember, the reflection prompt page will always help you to write reflections in a systematic way. Now let's do the same for your involvement in Model United Nations activity. Again, click on insert and insert text. Give it the title Model United Nations. Just like with the Youth Parliament section, upload any relevant certificates, photos or other visual documents of uh, your month participation and achievements. Let me add a certificate first. For the purpose of demonstration, I will upload this certificate. You may even add an image carousal if you have many images. Let's do it. Under insert, locate image carousal. Click on the plus button. Browse for the photos you wish to add. Select them and insert. 
Once the images are inserted, you get additional setting options. Set the carousal to autoplay if you want to and then change the speed to medium. That's it, you have uploaded multiple images. Remember to include a few sentences describing your MUN experience, the position you held, the skills that you developed and what you learned from being part of this program. As you add these co-curricular elements, don't forget to refer back to the reflection prompts we discussed earlier. Those will help you to provide deeper insights into the value and impact of these extracurricular activities. Now that we have covered the core sections of the portfolio, let's explore some other useful options available in Google Sites. First, we'll notice these undo and redo icons that allow you to easily revert or reinstate your recent actions if needed. Next, this preview button gives you a way to see how your portfolio will look as you are working on it without having to publish it at. You can even use these view modes to preview how your portfolio will display on tablets and on mobile phones. Next, this sharing button allows you to share access to your portfolio with others. This is particularly useful to getting feedback from your teacher. When you click on the share button, you will be able to invite your teacher by entering their email address. But here is the great part. Make sure you give them editor access rights. With editor rights, your teacher won't just be able to view your portfolio, but they can even edit your portfolio if needs be. For example, your teacher can add a few photos she has taken during your participation in an activity. Finally, when you are completely done, you can publish your portfolio and make it live by clicking this publish button. After publishing, you can copy the shareable link by clicking this and send it to your teacher, friends and family to showcase your fantastic work. Hopefully this tutorial will help you create a basic portfolio in an impressive way. A link to this sample portfolio is provided in the video description below. Thanks for watching.